Okay, I'm live. Hello, hello. This is Shelly Dressel, and tonight I am channeling the Universal Light Beings. El Bayon is from um, Arcturus, and Brisentia is from the Pleiades, and then Crystallia is from the Omniverse. And I channel these guys um, every couple of weeks or so. It just depends. And then sometimes there's little minis that go in between. So we are in such a transformational time right now on on earth that i just feel as if their information is something that needs to come out and if it resonates with you fantastic then subscribe listen you know you'll i, I do stuff about i don't know i don't even know like i did the channel two weeks ago and in between i did two more minis so it just depends on what's going on hi carol welcome and um so anyway i'm i'm streaming on facebook and on rumble but then i'll also put this on youtube afterwards i i realized as long as i'm not streaming such a long time on youtube they don't seem to care that i have the long channel because i know a lot of people used to like watching things on youtube um so we shall see uh but it's good to see everyone here glenda carol karen and uh let's see first time catching me live yay thank you Thanks for making the effort. It's always su such a challenge, you know, because with people in all the different time zones and everyone's working and you've got your family and you've got so much that you're doing that um, it, it just depends. <laughs> I was just looking at this. You saw the top of the, my shirt says shine on. So I thought, <laughs> good shirt for tonight because we're all going to shine on. Um, hey, Deborah, good to see you. So um, I wanted to make a comment that the last time we got together was two days after that uh, huge eclipse that took place. And um, the, the channel went really quickly. It was like they could get their information out quicker than before. And um, sometimes these would go on a long time. I think the longest was an hour and 50 minutes. But it was like, what, an hour and 30, something like that. And everyone was done with what they wanted to say. So it's important to know that when you're in a situation like this where someone's channeling, whether it's me or someone else, you're probably getting downloads that are coming into you. Sometimes you can feel it, sometimes you can't. But that's all just a part of the channeling process. And what they said, I forget who said it, was like, oh, everything's so smooth and there's much less resistance. And the downloads could go in a lot easier easier so point being if something needs to if i'm just talking 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 and seemingly going around in circles well it's because they're trying to get a download to go into people and if it's not going in they give me more words to say so um so that's one thing to be aware of and then what with what happened two weeks ago it was like everything just went Ch -ch -ch -ch. and so they didn't have to use as many words and we got through a little bit more quickly uh, there is a lot. Hey, Jill, good to see you. Uh, you and Ed both here. Good to see y'all. Uh, Ken, good to see you too. Nicole, good to see you. So I love this because like all this, oh yeah, no, you know, you know, you know, you. <laughs> uh, so many people that have been with me for a very long time. I personally have been channeling for almost 30 years now, um, but I've been doing the ULBs. They came in in 2016 and then I went public with it in 2020, fall of 2020. So we've done a lot during that time we've done a lot and um and our community has grown but there's always those that it's like oh yeah i know you i know you i know you and i love it i love it i appreciate y'all um supporting me i appreciate you supporting the community and as we all are here to support one another okay what else is coming up so if you do find that you're in a situation or something you're just kind of struggling with maybe consider having a private session with me i um crystallinetransformations.com is the one that's associated with the universal light beings and there's a link in there i think you go to the store and you can read about having a private session it will not necessarily be the ulbs that talk to you because they don't work with people like on one-on-one -on -one basis but i do have other energies and light beings that i work with and i've worked with them for a very long time so it can be about healing it can be about moving the energy around if you're stuck it can be about information talking with others just lots of different things okie dokie um mexico awesome good to have you um my mojo my mojo muy mojo muy mojo sorry <laughs> 
I always hate when I mess up people's little things. Um, Lanny, you're welcome. Thank you for that, uh, for saying thanks. Joanne, good to see you. Watching from England. Awesome. I know that uh, there'll be a couple that jump on here from Australia and uh, they are on consistently. And then frequently there's someone on here from Sweden. So uh, lots from Canada, lots from the US. And so I, you know, it's just all over the place, which is awesome. Well, anyway, um, now I, I, I know everyone wrote in your, your questions and you'll write things down here, but I, um, I've already been talking to them and just a, a few things that, yeah, Denmark, see, good to have you. Uh, lots, I was just reading a video about, um, the, the stock exchange coming down in Denmark. And actually I visited Copenhagen years ago, about 2005 or six, something like that. Um, I really enjoyed it, but good to have you. I'm glad you're part of this. See, we are a worldwide community now. This is why everything connects to one another. Um, so one of the things that is, I wouldn't say it's really confusing. I mean, I understand it, but one of the things that becomes so frustrating is the fact that it's like we've arrived, we're here, we, we, we've, we've had the eclipse, the energy is here, we're living in the energy, but yet there's so much that just seems to be dragging on and it's like they haven't disclosed that, they haven't brought this to public, they haven't done this. So occasionally um, I get, I, I never ever doubt that this is successful, it's already been successful. I get frustrated with how slow things seem to be moving sometimes. So that's one of the things that I'm asking them to kind of address, like, I thought that the timelines had all merged together. So did they merge together? And what does that actually mean? Okay. Yep. Maggie from um, Australia. See, we are from all over the place. Vancouver Island. Good to have you. Good to have you, Annette. Ah, okay. So I could sit here and say, hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. But I, I need to get going. <laughs> Y'all are here for the, for the channel. Anyway. Okay. Greetings. It is I, Elbeon. I come to you at this time with my messages of light, my messages of love. Since Shelly had so many questions that she was just putting out to you guys, much of them pertain to me. And so I thought that I would be the first one to come in and speak this evening. Timelines are a tricky, tricky thing. You all are so accustomed to just sliding subtly between timelines that each potential leads you into a different timeline. That's one way of looking at it. And then you're just sliding in and out of it all day long as you come up to something. Well, do I want to do this or do I want to do that? And when you look at it that way, then suddenly, gee whiz, you know, wh what am I doing? Where is it going to take me? And so you can consider that a timeline. You can also consider that you are always on the exact timeline that you need to be on because this is you and how you are creating your life. And it means that as you make choices, as you make different decisions, as you move in whatever direction it is that you may be moving, then all of that is just here simply for the experience of you living your life. So it's not that you switch and you go into a different timeline. And I mean, sure, you could look at it that way, but that's not really what's happening. Really, you are staying on your timeline that is most in, in your highest and best interest. And then you just, there's a lot of flexibility within that. So I wanted to talk about that. Now that Shelly, as, as a part of all the channeling that she does, both with us and the personal work and the goddess of creation, all these different things, she's living and experiencing, as are so many of you, the higher, lighter frequency. And you can feel it. You, How many of you, especially after um, the 8th, said, wow, now I feel as if the energy and the environment around me is exactly where I am and where I have been. Now I finally feel like I have a greater ease in movement, a greater ease in uh, in experiencing this, and all of which is exactly true. So then what happens, and uh, because all of you are living in the world with everybody else, with the other 
um, millions and billions of people. And then you listen to other rhetoric or you might see something that's on TV and they're talking about their reality, which is that, oh, they're going to have the elections in the fall. Whoop. There, um, this fake Biden has been going on and it'll be for four years. Who'd have thought that it was going to last this long? And, um, so, so many different things happening like that, that it causes people to say, well, wait a second. Like you're, you're scratching your head saying, wait a second. If this is what I know with my whole heart to be true, then why aren't they having an impact from that? And what I'd like to say about that is they are they are having an impact however if they are coming like like think about it as people that you're pulling out of the quicksand or people that you're pulling out of the mud and it's like come on come on come on let's go and they haven't quite realized that life is better outside of the quicksand so they haven't really begun to accelerate and be a part of that they can see that it's better for me not to be here and I need to be over there. So they're starting to move that way and they are moving that way, but they're just not there. So that's what leads to what, again, Shelly's saying then, well, then they're on a different timeline. Again, splitting hairs or what? Because you take everybody's personal experience and personal life reality and it goes into a collective consciousness through that collective consciousness it creates the energy that you are talking about nation that they um that they the corruption that has been rampant around the entire planet even those that are the most shut down are beginning to real Realize that human trafficking has been the all-time worst, um, especially over the last 15 to 20 years. So these are certain facts that cannot be denied, no matter what media they're looking at, no matter what they're talking about. And even if they don't want to sit and have a conversation and debate it and what to do about it, it's still something that is in their consciousness. No longer just sitting back here in the unconscious, percolating, waiting to go ahead. This information is now front and center. So the key becomes, why aren't they talking about it? All of the people such as you guys that have been aware of this for so long, you enjoy talking about it. You enjoy debating. And when something new comes out, it's like, ah, we knew it. Look at that one. There's there's some the, another piece of the puzzle. And you keep filling in these pieces to the puzzle that is creating the whole. And um, so a big piece, it's like that last piece of the puzzle that's going to be going in there is when the, re the rest of humanity or the mainstream of humanity steps going to be in six months going to be in two years hmm something just happened the screen kind of came and went am i still on here let's just make sure um i think so it looks like i am it doesn't say i'm not okay um i mean i've got everything plugged in so and a good stream so hopefully so as I was talking about it, as I LB on again, speaking with you. Um, so what I want to say to all of you is to continue to be in that best vibration that is you. Continue to send it out to the people around you. And you will find that bit by bit by bit by bit, people are going to rise up to this new vibration and this new potential. People want to feel good. People are very tired of not feeling good. People are very tired of not having enough money and not having a good place to sleep. And they're very tired of all the corruption that they have seen, especially over the last three to four years. So that is a commonality no matter what you're into or no matter what you believe. And um, so be patient. I see, as I have said before, I see huge disclosures coming out and uh, part of what distressed Shelly was someone that she likes to follow was saying nothing's going to happen till October, November. Well, and then if you wait till October, November, then it's going to go into another election. This is her concern. 
It is not going to happen. It is not going to wait till the last minute. You are going to hear um, like John F. Kennedy Jr. coming out and all of these other people that you have known have been alive in the background. And the fact that this corruption is so rampant, there's just about everybody in the nation can say that all the illegal aliens coming in have been a problem. And they have already started changing that and they've started cutting off that funding. So, so all of these things are coming out and they are being talked about. And the, one of the concerns that I just heard someone saying, yeah, but mainstream media is still controlled by the dark hats. No, it is not. It is controlled by the white hats and it has been for quite some time. And people have just, it, it if you think of, many, many different um, parts of this puzzle that's coming together and everyone's playing their part, including the media that recognizes we're just saying what we're told to say. And, um, and they, and they themselves, many of them do also believe that it's false information. So um, meaning the negative stuff is false information. Okay, so then that led on to another subject that Shelly wanted to talk about just because, you know, this is coming in. For those of you that live in the United States, there's the new movie that came out, Civil War. It came out like a week ago or something like that. And to look at it, it shows a lot of anarchy. It shows people just being fed up with the government, fed up with everyone around them, and literally just taking, taking um, their choices into their own hands and um and basically what this film is representing is all of these many parts of corruption it's being put out to you and shown that this is what's been going on the problem is or in her perspective the problem is that the average person doesn't know all these things doesn't recognize that that's actually telling you xyz or that doesn't re or don't recognize that that when these people are trying to communicate and they act a certain way and there's something in the background and there's so many different subtle parts to it that her concern is that it's just going to cause people to go into anarchy and my perspective of this is that oh this is interesting so it's like this group of beings just kind of walked into the room right here they're kind of right over there and um, some I'm familiar with, some I know, uh, but this is like about six of them. And apparently these six beings have been working with multiple people on the earth, putting out the videos that you see, putting out the full feature films that you see, putting out these various things that are a part of enlightening the the, the world. And um, we're, I'm just looking to see, does one of them want to talk to us or something, or do they have something to say? And um, okay, okay, okay. Okay. I am known as Matthew. I come from Alpha Centauri. And I have, that is, of course, not my name, but it works and is easiest for people to understand. I've been here for at least what you would consider a hundred years. Certainly not as long as El Bayon and some of the other individuals that have been here throughout this. But I have been here and specifically worked with the perceptions of the planet. Everyone has a perception. Everyone has, uh, and your perceptions are created by your life experiences. So you can show a video and five people can look at that and five people can interpret it in different ways. So what my team and I are doing is we're in in some of these cases they know exactly who we are and we're present in the room and it's like everyone is discussing what needs to be said but in many of these other videos what we'll do is we'll come behind them and there is energy that is implanted into the videos so that as people watch them no matter where they are in their life no matter what is going on they will receive downloads that are going to activate their consciousness that are going to activate their reality that are going to activate what has been lying dormant inside of them this has been going on for about i would say 50 years or more not just my group there have been other groups those that were the nefarious ones used to do that rampantly everything that was on the tv every commercial every musical group just about every form of communication had some sort of mind control energy in it and of course we do not do mind control but we were brought in 
to undo the mind control that was put forth by the nefarious ones. And that's what we've been doing. So when there would be something truly negative and horrendous that came out, we would immediately try to work with the energy and change it as much as we could. And if we could not change it, then we would work with another commercial, another singer, another whatever it may be to to counteract in a very verbal way what was what was taking place by the first one. One thing, um, I believe they've said it before, and um, I believe that that you guys will know this, but one thing that has taken place um, over time is that when you have truly negative, truly, I mean, there's a lot of people that are just kind of mean or kind of negative and you know, but they're not really bad to their depth. But when you work with those that are bad to their depth, that are socio sociopaths, that are or antisocial, they have zero conscience of any sort, and even their connection to soul is very spotty. Or some some of those that have been the foundation of everything that's been going on, then um, we cannot go in and undo what they did because our vibration is nowhere near that vibration. So all we can do is work from a higher vibration and bring in that energy. Especially since the eclipse that took place just a couple weeks ago, we were dancing on the ships, you could say, dancing in the streets if you want to think about it like that. Because finally, we were all being bathed in the energy of which we were accustomed. So we have all been dropping down our vibration and frequency so as to work with humanity. And we say this not for you to say thank you or anything. It's just that's what's been happening. So now we're able to come back into what is more our normal frequency because now you are also tapping into your frequency that is in alignment with that. So I could I could sit and chat for a long time. Um, throw in a quick question if you have for me, but, um, but I know that El Bayon is going to come back in in just a second. But I felt like it was important, and this is why, you know, Shelly was saying, you know, T talk about that movie, talk about that movie. And um, on the flip side, we don't know if she said this in channel or not before, but she went with her grandsons and she saw um, the gorilla movie. What was that called? King Kong, Godzilla, something like that. And, um, and she herself said that there was this one when they got to the center of the hollow earth and they didn't speak with words. They only spoke with their thoughts. And there was a massive crystal that was hanging down. Shelly in the, in the movie theater felt the boom as her heart expanded. So she asked her grandsons, hey, did you feel that? And they said, no, but it, they did. They did receive the, the transmission. They, their heart center was opened and things were realigned for them. That is but one thing. So there are multiple different things that are coming out through music, through TV, through, um, movies, multiple different sources, and we are tasked with working with them. So, um, Alexander, did anyone have something specific for me about working with the media? Any questions about that before I jump off? Okay, it must be, you, we know you weren't expecting this, and so we know that you guys are, maybe I've already answered every question. Maybe I'm picking up the questions from you and just answering them before we even, um, you can even ask them. All right. As I said, um, I am here from Alpha Centauri. The others that are in my group, as I said, there's about eight or 10 of us. And we are from various places around the universe because we work with the frequencies and everyone as a soul comes from, there are some that come specifically from the earth. The earth is your soul home planet. Uh, but the majority of the people here on Earth right now come from another part of the planet, a lot within your galaxy, but then a lot within other parts of the planet. So we have this variety because what we're doing is we're activating for those that come from our parts of the universe or or where, that from which you, you came. Okay. All right. Very good then. 
Well, thank you for this opportunity to jump in here. Thank you, Elbeyan, for giving me this chance and Shelly, uh, because we've been trying to talk to different people and sometimes people hear us, sometimes they don't. Uh, but but be aware when Shelly's saying, like in her heart of hearts, she knows she's absolutely 100% correct. It's done. It is complete. And so be not sympathetic but compassionate be compassionate as others wake up be compassionate as others say what the heck is going on here and just know that they'll catch up to you in the very not so very distant future thank you and saluia interesting Whew. Greetings. It is I, Elbeon. I had a feeling that they were going to come. I have spoken with them before. I have worked with them before. What you have probably discerned is that we all work in our different um, groups of people. Sometimes it's about the theme of what we're working for. Sometimes it's from where we um, came from. So there's many different connections for how we work with one another. But... Um, yeah. So the things that you see that you think are so negative, some of it is truly just negative. However, there's way more of it that are entrained with energies that are um, awakening people and helping people, like especially some of those movies that you look at and you think, oh my God, that, that movie was fantastic. I can't believe everything it said. In those, they're able to pulsate out, you know, massive amounts of energy. But others, it has to be very subtle and it has to be very indistinct because um, I do know there are many people that still, there's many people that still watch all the violent videos and all the violent movies. And so it's about understanding what has been and understanding that it is all transitioning. Okay, so let's just jump into questions now <laughs> since um, we've already done that. Oh dear, it's a long one. Let's see. Hello from the UK. We're hearing more and more casualties from the things in the arm. Last week, the UK government had a debate on this subject and very few MPs turned up for this. It is heartbreaking. Um, so I'm not, I'm not going to read the whole thing. I think I get the gist of it. So basically what this individual is saying is that they're seeing more and more people that are either dying or having medical problems that come from what came in the arm, especially since the year 2020. And uh, this is an unfortunate experience and it is true that it is going on. Um, some of this, so let me just put things, let's become a little esoteric here. When people are born in, onto the earth, there are multitudes of different reasons for why you are there, what your karmic agreements were for, and everybody transitions off the planet at the exact time that it is for them to transition off. So for those that you think, why haven't they died yet? They're having such a hard, hard time leaving. You know, that's in their karmic path. Um, so when there are like warfare and different things and you have lots of people dying at the same time, that was a karmic agreement. So that being said, all of these people that are dying because of what happened in the arm are part of an agreement that is part of the awakening of what is going on on the planet because uh, they are not just statistics. They are not going to be forgotten. They are not going to be ignored. And every time that something like this happens where the group shows up and the others don't show up, well, it's glaringly in their face that you didn't show up you didn't do this so continue to fight about it or or put the information out there continue to go continue to solicit continue to do everything that that you normally have been doing and um and it is going to come out and it is coming out on many 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 different levels there are i still think that even though there are a lot of people that are getting sick from this and many people that are transitioning because of this, 
there are also a lot that are not going to get sick, that are not going to transition. And sometimes it's because they got um, sailing. Other times it's because there's nothing in their body for it to react to. For example, if someone is a high vibration and they took something like that, they would just vibrate at a frequency where it wouldn't kick in. Um, not saying that everybody that's had this problem is because they were low frequency. There's so many different things that come into play. Um, but, but there have been other things that people got in the arm that also caused problems. It's just that this is a much higher percentage than it has ever been before. And it is about coming out to show all the many things that were orchestrated, all the many things that were decided and what the reason was for it to happen in that way. And, and that's all going to come out. I say that not in the least bit to be ca uh, callous. I say this with love and compassion for anyone that has lost someone in this way. Um, but I also know from the bigger scheme of things that this is all a part of what's building up the foundation to say, we're not going to do it anymore. We don't care what you say. We don't care about this. We are going to do what is right for us. And it's about each person taking back their sovereignty. And your sovereignty is you as your divinity, you as your soul, you as the individual that is here and living in this reality. Not someone that's just a number in a book, but someone that is a part of that is expressing as your sovereign essence. Okay. Might the Democratic Party in all 50 states come to a final end soon? It's not just the Democrats. There are many, many, many different Republicans that are equally bad. Um, the Democrats are just the ones that tended to go into the extreme and tended to go into, um, you know, a lot of the radicalization. However, that's not you know, there are plenty, plenty, plenty of Republicans that have. So what is going to happen? This is how I've seen it. And I still see it. And in fact, it feels like the May, May timeframe is that when this all comes out and is made information that could be as late as July, but um, there will be the military is going to step forward. The military is going to talk about what's happening. And it's the, one of the reasons that you see this different scene and everything is this is going to happen worldwide. We've said it before. We said we see the entire world coming out at the same time. So it may be that Australia still has to finish some things. The United States still has to finish some things things. Russia, you know, no matter where it is that everyone is all going to come out at the same time. And in all of these countries, it's going to be that, um, well, so-and-so was corrupt. So-and-so has not been there. They've been taken out for crimes against humanity. And we've had a, a surrogate in there, you could say. And so what will happen with the United States, because that's where that individual was talking about is they, they will come out and they will say this. And in the saying of this, they're going to also, um, just say, okay, so we're going to put a stop on everything at this time. We are going to reorganize the country. And so it will be at least four to five to six months of what you call martial law. But actually, under the martial law, things will improve dramatically because under the martial law, they'll start getting rid of all of those illegal aliens. Under martial law, they're going to reduce the interest rates or, or whatever it is that's causing the inflation. They, th We see inflation coming down. We see interest rates coming down. We see people's standard of living beginning to get better again. So much of what's been going on is because of the illusion that's put forth by the president that's there right now. And so by the time these guys take over and that, they, and they're going to be there to create that time of stability. And during that time, I mean, this has already been decided. It's not like they're going to start saying, okay, now that we've done that, what should we do next? So they've already have it in the background and they're going to have something completely different. They're going to go back to the original constitution and they're going to start from there. And, and, um, and so we do not see, oh, Samantha, um, sorry, that is Shelly's niece. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, sorry, that just knocked her out of channel. Give me a second here. She's in the background laughing her head off probably. 
anyway, but the point is that um, this change has been a very, very long time in coming. And uh, you will go back to your foundation. You will go back to what the, the original constitution that was created. And in doing so, it'll take, it'll take some time, but it's that, that is what is going to kind of anchor and settle all this unrest that that's going on right now. Quite frankly, it'll be a relief to many, many people when, um, when that takes place and all this comes out because so many people have been saying there's something just not right, but I don't know what it is, you know, talking about the normies again. Okay, so kind of a long answer to that, but but that's my perception is there will not be Republicans, there will not be Democrats, there will be new um, new ways of organizing people. Will the ruling political party in Mexico called Morena win the elections in this June? Are you sure you're going to have an election? Because we just looked at that and said, um, will Morena be winning the election in June? And when we looked at June, we just saw this flat, meaning we didn't see a yes, we didn't see a no, we didn't, you know, we, we saw like neutral. And um, so we're wondering if maybe there's a potential that you're not going to have an election for some reason. Um, when we look at that name and we look at Mexico, it feels like they still have some drug cartels that, and as you know, the cartels have been in, in most of um, Mexico and Central America, they've been a big part of this problem. But also many, many, many of them have already been rounded up, or at least the leaders of them have. And there have been transitionings that have been taking place. And this individual, um, Monroe, Monroe, what was it again? Is that in here? Um, Morena, Morena. Okay. Yeah, it feels like he's trying to bring continuity to the country. And, um, we, we just feel that if there is an election, that a lot of this stuff is going to be worked out beforehand. And, and if not, then it may be that things at the last minute come up. Again, this is that worldwide thing. So even if there is an election and this hasn't come out worldwide, um, then no, no, we just heard there's going to be no election. There's going to be something that happens that says there's a delay. Um, so so we, we feel like there are going to be many, many changes taking place. And um, we're just going to slip in here. This is something that someone had said to Shelly. She says, why do you never talk about South America? Why do you never talk about Africa? And um, so since we're talking about Mexico here and we're connecting in, let us look at South America and just see what else. So as we look at, so as I'm looking at South America, I feel as if there is a great deal of spirituality in, in that there's a lot of really ancient lands there, especially along the mountain ranges. And, um, and there are some really ancient souls that live there, some of the indigenous people and, um, and others. We see in certain, like, it looks like two or three areas where the, 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 the nefarious ones really were stuck in there and they really terrorized the people and they brought a lot of bit of turmoil to those areas. And those we see at least two of them are gone. And that last one is still in the process of being resolved. Um, we do see South America as being certain of the countries as being very much a part of this corruption, but it feels like they have already capitulated. And what is in place now is they've been trying to rebuild back um, Brazil being one and Venezuela being another one. And um, Peru felt like it was fairly stable. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe it wasn't, but energetically that's how it's coming across. But but Venezuela and, per and Brazil in particular have been really struggling for many, many years. And that feels as if that is um, what is in the process of this being resolved. Okay. So for the individual, hopefully that answers that question. <laughs> Go ahead, Alexander. Did the people of Palestine and Israel come together to fight Hamas and the Jewish Kazarian, Kazarian Mafia? And what is happening in those countries? So Palestine and Israel. Let's look at that. It's very interesting. Very interesting. Because we look at this just about every time or every other time. And so often when I've looked at it, I've just seen a lot of 
turmoil there. I've seen a lot of energy. I've seen a lot of fighting back and forth. I've seen bombs. I've seen, and when I looked at it just now, because you're asking this question, it was like peace. It was like tranquil. It was like learning to build their lives back again. So we do feel as if some agreements have come, have come to. Now, as you, we're just going to say, I'm just going to say my perception. Many of you may have different perceptions, especially those that live in the areas, but this was not about the, the Israelites and the Palestinians. Um, this was about the Kazarian mafia that came in and took over and about the dictatorship and about the way they used these areas as a means of creating warfare and as a means of creating disconnect in this part of the country, in this part of the world. When you take all of that out, it feels like there's going to be peace and tranquility and people working together with one another and rebuilding the area. So, since that's my perception as I look at it, then it's very, very close if it's not already happening. So then we wanted to stretch out and look at, like you know, like Saudi Arabia. What about Iran? What about these other places? Uh, Afghanistan. And, and it feels like this is like a wave upon wave that's just rolling out from there. It does feel like there's still some warfare going on. It does feel like, I mean, Benjamin Netanyahu's been gone. <coughs> He's been gone for a while. And many people were saying, sorry, swallowed wrong. And many people were saying that once he was gone, that would be the trigger that would start telling the whole world what was going on. And um, so, so, but, but he's gone. I mean, there's, there's no one there. Um, and the people that were behind this, this last gathering of conflict that was going on was a way that so many of the white hats picked up these people. You know, they picked up those that were um, the nefarious ones. They picked up those that were uh, aggravating things and that were running the show behind the lines. And then as they went to um, Syria and as they went to Iran and as they started to instigate warfare over there, those places are suddenly saying, not going to do it. Now, the rhetoric is they're going to fight and they're going to bomb and they're going to take over. But the people and the people that are there are saying, we're not getting involved in that again. So that's that's my take on it. And um, and maybe someone else has some other information. But, um, but since this is how it looks to me, and I'm looking at the energy of these places, and I'm bringing it down into where they are on the earth plane, my sense is that if it's not exactly as I'm speaking about it, then it will be in a very, very short period of time, because the energy gets created, and then it manifests. And so we're looking at the energy, it's been created, that it's peaceful, and that people are working together with one another, and then that will manifest either immediately or within a very, very short period of time. Whoop, whoop. Okay. Albion, what do you see for Australia? When do you see the end of all this? And will we see real justice? Still seeing all these corporate politicians um, appear to have gotten away with everything. Let me look at Australia. When we look at Australia, the vast majority looks like it's already been transitioned. And the what you think of the corrupt politicians are people that are playing a role, I guess you could say. And they're the ones that are, um, what's the word? Putting forth the illusion that they're still the, the negative people there, that they're still the negative individuals that are, you know, causing problems. So, so our take on Australia is it's still, it, it's almost like this heavy weight that is still being dragged along. And that gives me the sense that they have not completely finishing, finished what they needed to do. So much of the focus of all this energy has been on the United States because this has been kind of the key point for things. And so as the United States and, and China, there was a massive change that took place in China. Uh, but Australia was also one of the places where so many went and, um, and there, and there were dumps that were built and there were, you know, trying to get to um, Antarctica and portals and different things like that. So Australia became very, very heavy, heavy, heavy in the um, nefarious ones and that heavy energy. So that to us looks like it is about 
80% transitioned. So what that means is that there is still more that needs to be cleared out. There's still more that needs to be transitioned. However, that light energy is just sitting there, just sitting there waiting to come down and waiting to integrate. But in looking at the officials that you speak about, um, many of those are just acting a role, like someone is wearing a mask or someone is a lookalike and just playing a role because mo those that were the worst are all gone. And those that were the heads of the corporations are gone. And, um, and so many of, and, and some, sometimes not everyone in the corporation even knows this is going on, but they either replace them at the top or those people step down. And, um, and then the next people that come up, some of them think, well, I'm just going to get the good deal they had and get all that money. Um, and then they realize, nah, not going to happen. So, so there's still these transitions that are going on. Um, and it is the majority, the vast majority majority is complete but it does not look like it like like it when we look at like 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 i just talked about with um um not egypt israel and palestine it looked like peace and balance and it had got when i look at australia it looks heavy as if there's still that energy that needs to be transitioned however you have some very 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 powerful portals there and there's a lot of great energy so those of you that live down there or anyone anywhere in the world start working with the energy start pumping in the energy of the highlight frequency start visualizing that you're sending that energy into it and let it just move through and let it push out the negativity because as it pushes out the energy then those people that were feeding on the negativity they're just going to topple over there there will be nothing that supports them oh i see you're saying thank you so very much okay very good Whew. how can we tell the difference between physical ascension symptoms and real medical problems great question i have a pain in my chest bone oh i didn't finish that uh pain in my chest bone um opposite my heart and i don't know if it's something to do with my heart chakra or if there's something wrong with my heart great great questions so the ascension symptoms are very real and they're and and especially when you're feeling them in your physical body we may call them ascension symptoms because you're having these symptoms because your vibration is shifting but that doesn't make them less real what what i would say to do for the first thing is just work with your energy put your hands on your chest and see if you can just pull that energy out that's causing that and just make sure your heart center is open and then visualize it as it's moving in a circle and um and then and so often when people are bringing in new energy or they're learning something new, pain and problems come from stuck energy. So it's always about moving the energy. So working with your heart, moving it out of your heart, letting it transition, whatever it's going to do. And um, that would be the first thing that I would do. However, if you continue to have problems, it certainly doesn't hurt to go get things checked out. And um, who was it? We were talking to someone recently, um, or, or Shelly was, in a session, and they're like, I've never had this problem before, but she was having high blood pressure and some other things. Well, they told her, go on the medicine if that's what you need to you get through this process and then you can wean off of it when you are done so if there are things i mean there's many 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 different naturopathic things that you can do that can also help you but if there's something that sticks in your consciousness that says you know maybe i should go get this checked out then go get it checked out because you are intuitive you do know your body you do know your your energies you do receive that information from your divinity and that's always going to be the final source so i've given you a few things that you can do to try for yourself but um, at the end of the day trust your intuition and if something just keeps niggling at you and then then get it checked out all right anything else okay well i've talked for quite a while and of course i do want to remind you that i let someone else come in <laughs> Oh, anyway, thank you for this opportunity. Understand that there are many, many 
um, downloads that everyone is getting. Understand that even if you don't get a chance to write out your question, you will get the answer inside of you. Just open up your consciousness, open up your awareness, and you will receive. Beloved, we're ever with you. And Saluia. Greetings. It is I, Brisentia. And I thank you so much for this opportunity. I was over there chatting with that group because they've just been stopping here and listening to this channel. They were not familiar with this channel and with the energy that we've been doing. So I've been talking to them. And one of the things that it brought up to me that I thought would be interesting for all of you is that so often people think, oh, this person is channeling Archangel Michael, you know, someone, someone that is a specific person. And, and then anyone else that channels Archangel Michael is that same exact essence. And Michael knows all of this. Uh, he does not because there's so many different aspects. And so people connect at the vibration or frequency that is for them. So too, there are so many of us that are here now and some that are working like these guys directly with those that are making the films. They're also working with not just those major films. They're working with other people that make those videos and documentaries and things. And sometimes they're working with them in a channeling manner. Sometimes these people receive an idea in their dream state. Sometimes they'll be sitting there working on the computer about something and something will flow on into them. So not everybody recognizes that that's still channeling. All of this is channeling. All of this is how you work within yourself and, and, and how everything comes together. So that's how they've been working. There are others that their focus was about strictly spirituality, helping people to understand what is their spiritual essence. And, um, and so some of those are over in whatever se sector they are. There are also many other light beings that are beings of light, but they just vibrated at a different frequency. So now that the, we have ascended, you're not going to see those as many anymore. You're not going to, feel them around you anymore because they've done their job and they're going to move on to something else and you will have all sorts of new energies coming in and this is not to say that they were low frequency this is just what happens as as everyone ascends even within each one of you as the individual you might have been like I'll, I'll use Shelly for an example. She's channeled the goddess of creation since what was it? 2000, 2001, something like that. And the essence that she connected with when she went public in 2003 is not the essence that she's working with now. So every so often, sometimes it was months, sometimes it was years, she'd shift up and be at a new level. And so the vibration and the energy would transition. Everyone that was listening would come right along with her. Sometimes people started listening to her that were at a higher and they pulled and they pulled it up. So it's a group energy, a group consciousness, but she's been with the goddess of creation. Um, and all along the way, um, she's gone to higher and higher and higher frequencies. And that is all within the goddess of creation. So sometimes you'll completely leave behind who you were working with. We're talking about your guides and angels, and sometimes you'll stay with them and ascend. Now, one of the things that I wanted to talk about, because this is also being said by many other people, are what's going on in the water? How long have you heard, watch the water, it's in the water, check the water, check the water. And um, this is in, in Shelly's mind since probably 18 or 19. She's been here seeing phrases like that, and it was like, okay, what's in the water? The earth, as you know, is mostly water. <coughs> there are many, many portals that are inside the oceans, and those portals are where ships come in and out of the ocean. Uh, this is becoming much more evident to people because of the rise in vibration. Before, if you think about it, if someone is of a particular frequency and something is a super high frequency, it's not in their level of comprehension. So if they see it, they may say, oh, I saw something, don't know what it is. Or they might not even see it because it's so far beyond their level of comprehension. Um, but more and more in this next wave of, and this to, uh, to, to me, as I'm looking at it, it's going to be after. After all this disclosure comes out, because that's when you're really going to see another shift upward in, in the vibration and in the frequency of the earth. But there are in particular, hmm, four, three to four um, portals that are in your oceans that go all the way into the center of the planet and that, and that are sometimes will come into this 
portal and then it'll take us out into another place in the universe so it's like a a road you could say that goes from one place to another and when people work are working with portals they're not always just working specifically to come into that one place do what they need and then shift out it certainly can happen that way but sometimes it's come in there's a community there there's a lot that's going on they go and do what they need to do and then they shift out going back to where they came from or going to a different place if when we start talking about the portals that and this i'm talking about when ships are coming in and out they can be those that you call like a cigar ship the long round ones they can be the triangle ships they can be uh the circular ones there's many many different type of craft and the craft just depends on what the purpose is for those individuals so it's not that one craft is bigger or worse than another it's about what is needed in a particular mission and that's the craft that is associated with that mission so then the next step comes with um what about people and portals like walking through a portal and those are not going to be as easily done as they as as the ships are so all of us that come into the that come onto the ships that um that are working with be it your planet or any other planet we all have a vibrational frequency and an alignment and um sometimes it's checking dna sometimes it's checking a fingerprint sometimes it's an eyeball you know all these different things that you've seen and what people have been using on your own planet for security um those are are definitely a part of it but there's another key essence consciousness if someone is of a consciousness that is high enough and 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 and, and the frequency is enough then they can move through a doorway or they can move through a portal or they can move through an experience um but especially at the very very beginning here it's going to be very 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 few people that are going to be able to do that consciously and most often those people that are going to be participating in that are those that have already been doing it that i had already set it up back in what you call the past at some point like when you look at a lot of what you call the white hats and those individuals that are working with that they have they can go individually in through a portal they what do they call it what do you call it here blue beam technology or something like that so they can move backwards and forwards through time space reality they can move out to the ship if they need to go out to the ship we remember um back when we first started doing this um trying to remember the exact circumstances but something about you know trump had gotten covid or you know they said he had covid he had gotten sick so you know he had two people with him they transported him up to a ship he was in a med bed healed and brought back to earth like you know four or five hours later so they were already in the process of doing stuff like that so they could easily transport and um so so your average person is not going to be able to just go and touch and do this um it's going to be someone that is in alignment someone that understands what's going on someone that perhaps has their um dna already associated with it but again their consciousness is already in that state of a balance of, of alignment also um so some of these ships uh some of these big portals there's one that's out in um of course antarctica but there is one that's in the atlantic that is somewhat it's in the southern atlantic somewhat between um what you would say like the caribbean and going out towards the towards the north and west of that um the bermuda triangle you call that that's on kind of the edge of it the portal itself is actually deeper into the atlantic ocean there's another one down um north of australia and um kind of between when you get over towards australia and southern africa and that area there's another big portal there so different people in different places you may be seeing things um some of it you're seeing it on the on the computers some of it you'll see it with your own eyes some of it will be videoed and released with that intention as you know you've got a whole team over here and they're but the leaders of the teams there's many many people that work underneath them um that that are working at releasing information and helping people to understand so look to the water the water is going to be the next phase but it is not going to come out in complete knowledge for at least six months to nine months or a year because you still need to finish what you're doing now before everybody is ready to move to that next level but as with everything they start seeding the information ahead of time and that's what's happening right now okay 
Um, I know that we're getting a little bit latish here, so I'll just jump into questions. But those are my that was my primary topic for the evening. Whew. Can you tell us about the cloud seeding we have been seeing taking place in Dubai? Okay. Yes, I think I know what you're talking about. I think I, I saw, I see through Shelley's consciousness what you're talking about that almost looked like a matrix or something that was above Dubai. So Dubai, how to say this? Again, I reiterate, just as we all do, just to, to make sure that Everyone knows that when we talk about these various countries, we're not talking about the average people. We're talking about um, the elite that have used that. And in Dubai, there was a lot of the elite and there was a lot of corruption that took place there. So there were many, many overlays that were placed over the city. Um, it was over the city. It was over the surrounding areas. And some people even noticed it as they went in and out on um, airplanes or, or I think those are ships that come in. Um, so... So what you've been seeing now is a counteracting or an undoing of that heavy overlay that was placed upon Dubai, Dubai and, and the surrounding areas. It wasn't just Dubai. It was, you know, of course, it was just in various parts around the world. But in Dubai in particular, it feels as if the um, the 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 top level has is gone and it feels like some of those coming in are the, whether they're given the illusion that they want to reiterate or recreate what was done before or, you know, I, I'm not 100% sure of what that means. But when I look at Dubai, it's a beautiful place. It was created for, you know, entertainment. That's one of the biggest things. And so some of the trends, there will be a transition of, of what Dubai is going to be used for. Because as you go there now, there's the very, very wealthy and then basically no one else or just a few that were that were you know that in other words there's a big contrast between um the people that live there and so that upper level is going to be basically removed and then that is going to allow others to kind of shift upward to have a better standard of living and it's going to create a transition in the people that are in charge there and so all of that big huge matrix of of stuff some of it was completely blank but some of it was undoing the energies of what had been done and that was done specifically by um, Andromedans. There were ships that were from Andromeda, and they were the ones that were um, creating that. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that they wanted to say. So basically, no matter where it is around the world, if you see chemtrails, the majority are done as a means to um, transition whatever might be lingering in the airspace or to help to um, just transition the the thick overlay that certain people are still carrying around with them you know to kind of cut through it or to open it up i cannot say a hundred percent there is never any um negative chemtrails because i just can't say that a hundred percent but if i had to say there's any negativity at all to me the percentage would be about one percent you know very 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 little very very few and um and that would only be you know for one you know, there's just not enough of the nefarious ones left to to really actively work with that anymore. So um, so that's why I, I can't imagine it, but I'm not going to say no because, you know, we're, we're not everywhere. Okay, great question. Thank you for that. We haven't looked at Dubai before. Will our demonic governor and all the corrupt politicians be removed from Hawaii possibly before the end of 2024? Let me look at Hawaii in particular. It's very interesting. So speaking of that portal, that one portal that we said was in the South Pacific, uh, it's not exactly in Hawaii, but there are portal, there are like pathways that take things to Hawaii. The Hawaiian islands themselves were very, very sacred. They were part of a really ancient sacred energy, which those that are the intrinsic ones know, you know, the, the, the natives, uh, they're very well aware of that. And the Polynesians all along those chains. Um, so 
when the corrupt ones came in there, they knew about it also, and they took that and they mangled it and they changed it. So that has been in the process of being undone. The last really negative thing was what was done on Maui, and that showed to all of those that were looking, okay, here are the bad guys, and they were, they've all been rounded up. The governor is, he knows his time is limited. He's just trying his best to do his last couple of things, but they, they've got him rounded up, and for some reason, and they want him to stay where he is for the time being. Uh, but he's not getting away. He's not getting anywhere. He's got that thing on his ankle. And um, um, yeah, so it you said before the end of 2024, it feels to us like it's all going to change before July. Something's happening in July. What is that? That's the anniversary for the United States. So maybe it'll that maybe that'll become kind of the focus. But it feels to us like it'll be sooner rather than later. Okay. I used to watch Gaia TV, but then heard it was infiltrated with the negative people. Is this true? Yes, it was infiltrated with the negative people. However, the majority of them have also been pulled out. So when you look at Gaia TV now versus, so it started off with great intention, with a lot of good energy, and as like a small TV with people that had great intentions. And then as they grew, the nefarious one says, oh, look at that, we can't have them over there. So they got bought out by someone kept the same name and everything, but that's when the nefarious ones came in and that's when they started shifting and changing things around. And now most of those people have been pulled out again and it feels like there's a new management that's coming about. And um, some of the shows have remained consistent throughout all of this, but there's some new things that are coming up. So my perception is that Gaia TV is, that that's the transition. It started one way, got infiltrated and is, and is reinventing itself as we speak. So maybe not, immediately but within the short distance it feels like everyone's going to be saying oh look at how nice it is i feel so good when i watch it this is going to be true about many of these channels that you watch is that there's going to be just something nice about it now that you hadn't seen before so um so yes it's going back to to what it originally was intended but it's not there yet dear Presentia, can you please tell us about the white brotherhood living in the himalayas the Great White Brotherhood does not live in the Himalayas. That's when, if they come into the earth, they, they do come into the Himalayas, but they actually live off the planet. And um, the Himalayan mountains have been always one of the sacred, There's a, there are portals there that keep it in that sacred energy. You know, that's where Tibet is. That's where these very high mountains are. And, um, and so that's always been a place that has held the energy of the earth. There are some direct um, portals that go, or, or pathways, if you want to call it that, that go straight into the inside of the earth, not into the corrupted part, but it's all insulated. Like um, when we talked about the higher vibration, that in and of itself becomes an actual insulator because you just can't go through it, especially if you're not of the right vibration, you just don't get in. And so what you're going to find is that um, when you when you start hearing more and more and more a lot of the atlantean tablets are stored in the himalayan mountains a lot of the ancient histories that go back millions of years have been stored in the himalayan mountains they have all some of them have been on different type of texts some and just multiple different ways and so that is why they consider um, the Himalayan mountains and the white brotherhood the great white brotherhood as being a part of the same thing that being said um be aware that no matter what happens, no matter what is in that area, the true ancient tablets of all the histories cannot be destroyed. So if people say, oh, there's been warfare, they, uh, they tried to take it over, well, they would just dis disappear. In other words, if someone was trying to read them or someone got their hands on it and they were of a lower vibration, they simply would not see what was there. It would just disappear in front of them and it would be protected. So the Great White Brotherhood is some is what people consider sometimes the um, the anchoring energies of something happened right over here, the anchoring energies of the planet. And, um, and so they, they live off the planet, but that is where they come into. And they have been many of the ones directing that soul energy of the earth. They don't, I mean, they're obviously very, very well aware of all the 
other planets that have come in here to live. And they're very well aware of all the corruption that's been going on, but that is not their focus. Their focus is on the spirituality, on continuing to hold the spiritual soul essence of the planet. And that being said, every single person that's inhabiting the planet now. Um, so, so that's their focus. That's what they have always been. And that's what they have always, um, represented and that that's not changing anytime soon. Is it possible for a soul who once left the earth plane to connect with loved ones who left behind? Absolutely. A hundred percent. Energy is energy is energy. So whether someone is in is living on the earth as a person, you're radiating energy. Whether that soul has gone back home to to back to its own soul, back into the whole soul, that's still energy. So thinking about them, talking to them, doing anything like that can easily bring them back into your space. In fact, we, there have been, you know, we're pulling from Shelley's mind. There have been times in private sessions with people when they've said, and in the not so distant future, those loved ones will be able to materialize back on the earth plane. Maybe, maybe not to live the rest of their lives or maybe just periodically or maybe just for short periods of time. That I'm not 100% sure about. But you, you, there's never a death. You live on infinite, in, infinite, infinity. There's infinite life form through your soul essence. So you can always connect with your loved ones. They can connect with you. They can reach out to you or you can reach out to them either way. But if you hold their essence in, in your heart and you, I'm, I'm just thinking about you. I just want you to know how much I love you. And, uh, I've, I've missed you, you know, whatever it is that you want to say, then open up your senses and see if you don't maybe feel them with you. Okay. Will humanity get med beds in this lifetime? And will we know the truth about Antarctica? Yes, you will know the truth about Antarctica. And yes, you will get med, med beds in this lifetime. You know, the perception when, especially as we started talking about these back in 2020, was that they would physically manifest by this time, 2023, 2024. And, uh, and that was very much the intention. However, with the way that things have played out and with how things are looking right now, I still think that you will have med beds on the earth. Um, but now it's going to be probably more like three or four years. They may be here sporadically in different locations, but to have it consistently in different places around the planet. And I can't say why that's changing. Going back to the timelines that, uh, uh, that El Bayan was talking about before, uh, that the original timeline, that was a huge focus. And there's still the talk about having the med beds to be able to clear out the, um, the thing in the arm. Um, so that's, that's a possibility also. Uh, but right now, I don't see them for mass production. I mean, they're made. They're made. Some up on the moon, some down in the in the dumps, some in different places. So they've already been created. It's just about integrating them into humanity. Okay. So my first perception was four or five years down the road. However, the more that we talk about it, the more that people talk about it, the more that you put forth the intention that you are of the frequency and there are plenty of people of the frequency, then that just pulls it closer and closer to you. This is why we say that nothing is solid. Everything is flexible. Everything transitions. And sometimes when you talk about things not yet happening, it just pushes it further out to not yet happen. And sometimes when you talk about things as if, as if it is happening and it is now, even if it might not be now in your reality, but talking in the now brings it closer to you. Okay. Anything else? What time is, it? oh, it's only 817. Goodness gracious. Again, it's so funny because Shelly was looking at the clock at one time and said, oh, getting tired and then oh it's only 8 17 so we do shift time as we're talking all right anything else for me can you please speak of the covenant of elbion uh, what the covenant of elbion and what it means for earth now not 100 sure what she means the covenant of elbion 
Elbion? Not speaking of Elbion that works with us or something else. The Covenant of Elbion. Don't know what that is. What is the Covenant of Elbion that this person's talking about? It feels like one of those Ark of Covenants, which these are things that were placed in the earth um, and, and an Ark is like a long ship uh, in most cases. And it was stuff that as these various levels of the planet, um, you know, folded in on top of themselves. Uh, this one feels in particular as if it's coming from something around Lemuria or something like that. And, um, and it does feel as if it's something that's been partially activated. Not everyone was there that needed to be there yet. And so it's not been the right time for it to activate. But there is a good chance that it's going to activate. There will be many that will activate at various times. And sometimes as they activate, they'll literally rise to the surface of the earth and you will see them and you'll say, oh, what is that? What is that all about? And um, and it will be a way of bringing things to people and dispersing information and sending out like healing energy or whatever the intention was of that, of that ship. Sometimes it will remain submerged or wherever it is. Sometimes they're in caverns inside of the planet. Sometimes they're under the ocean. And, um, and then they'll just be activated by, it, it takes more than one person to activate one of these, um, arcs. And, um, and so once everyone gets there that needs to be there and it becomes fully activated, then sometimes it'll be a place to go. Sometimes it'll be just a place of communication. Sometimes it will release information like these tablets that we talked about with the Himalayan mountains. Um, there'll be different, not those tablets, but other types of things that are written on information that is giving you information about the the societies that lived before yours. You, As you know, there are some that were very, very well advanced um, compared because everything fell down and you've been struggling you know tartaria what was the time space reality of when tartaria was here in your linear timeline you're thinking okay maybe in the 1800s or something like that but it was actually a longer or later or earlier period of time uh, but it is something that was erased from the consciousness um, but it will come back and people will be much more conscious of it so going back to that question, I hope that answers it, that it is, it does feel like it's something that will be more activated over time. Anybody else? Okay. Well, I thank you for this opportunity. I am ever present. I am coming in more and more often and visiting with a, a, a lot of you now, and that's going to just continue. So very exciting times that we live in, and I thank you for this opportunity. Aunt Saluia. Hang on. Rejuvenate. Greetings. It is I, Crystalia. I am so very, very excited about this time to be here. You guys may notice that it's a full moon at this time. I have, as prior to the eclipse, but over time, I've been paying attention to when the moon is full, the sun is in this cycle, the planets are in this cycle, all these different things. That is something that was not as prominent to us because it was entrained in our consciousness. Uh, but the way in which you guys are talking about astrology, uh, the way that you look at it for where were things when I was born to where were things when this happened and um, with this eclipse, what's behind it, with this full moon, what's behind it. And it is a wonderful, wonderful way for you to tap into the energies of the experiences that are amplified, that are associated with that. 
it is the astrology that has gone back as I'm looking at it through your ancient times. It is that one consistency. There are certain people that say, well, don't you see planets at, an, at one time and you might not see them at another time? And yes, as I'm looking back, I can see that there is some differentiation at different times in your history. Sometimes they saw more, sometimes they saw less. Sometimes it's about the frequency. And, um, and so some of these planets that were having all the turmoil and trouble, they didn't necessarily vibrate at a particular frequency so some of the microscopes did not see them and as this whole, whole transition is being taken in this in this universe and in particular in this galaxy then it is allowing for greater clarity for all of the all of the people that live on these different planets and and you could think of them as looking just like you or maybe they look a little different but they're living their life they're having their experience some of them know about other planets and what's going on some of them were oblivious oh sound familiar does it not so anyway with this full moon that is happening kind of as we speak the energy is there i think it was full yesterday or or the day before those are wonderful, wonderful times, and, and they happen every month, but but the new moon, the full moon, the, the different things in your sun, those are wonderful times for you to create a new beginning or to create a time to emphasize something that you want to expand in your life or to use these different times to release and let go of things that are no longer serving you. One of the things that I have come to notice about humanity that I think is your best quality is that of transition. You have the ability to reinvent yourself every single day if you wanted to. Most people do not but you have the ability to make new choices to go and do new and different things to have different experiences so it's really really important for you to utilize that gift that is a gift that is a part of being human that is not something that is present on every other planet in in, in your universe so begin to look towards the stars look towards your own planet look towards what is happening what is manifesting and how can it support you and then how you maybe can make new and different changes in your in your life if you feel as if you need to so another thing i want to talk about is that for any of those of you that that think oh my goodness is this really true is this really happening the answer is yes yes it's happening yes your your planet has ascended yes there is more and more of the higher light frequency than the lower frequency and yes it's all being integrated into every single one of you on the planet um um sorry there was something that went through my mind as um as i was talking i don't know hmm oh well i cannot remember what it was but the um so speaking of free will someone will say well free will is what led to you know the a lot of the negativity that has gone on on your planet yes indeed it has but free will is also giving you the ability to respond to every situation so um what i see for so many of you is you get into this rut of negativity and so situations happen and you react in a negative way so here's where you have the chance to say well this just is really bringing me down how can i look at it differently and that's a thought and a choice that you can ask yourself all day long how can i look at it differently so let me guess how many of the billions of people on the earth are going to do that probably a tiny tiny percentage so it doesn't matter really that any one person does it but as the whole entire planet is moving through this transition you are reinventing yourself you are recreating yourself you are recreating or reinventing how you're going to look at one another how you're going to look at the planet how you're going to look at the universe all these different things that are transitioning now are going to create changes in you so you've been focused on so much of just let me get through this let me get through that through the um, political part of it. Let me get through the being ill. Let me get through all these specific things that are going on. So now is the time to start to think, well, okay, if I'm going to create in a higher frequency, what am I gonna create? What do I want for myself? What do I want for my planet? And start talking about that and seeing what kind of conversations will come up for you. Because that's the, 
this is how powerful each one of you are and it's how important this is as you make these conscious choices you're getting out of being controlled by others you're getting out of being the automation you're now getting into your true authentic self and so let that express through the way that you communicate the choices that you make and what and all these changes happening to the planet all right let's go ahead and um, jump into some questions because i know shelly's getting tired can we relax into these newer energies to physically call our soul tribe great isn't that what i was just saying too i love it it feels like it is time for us to meet our soul family on the physical plane after most of us have been in relative isolation this is absolutely true that's a wonderful question and i'm so glad that you have brought it up for everyone to be able to consider that um, as you are as you are living as you are creating this most of you have found your soul uh, not most many of you have found your soul tribe this is a soul tribe right here people that listen to this people that c gather this sometimes you'll be even giving messages to one another um so so your soul tribe is you are going to find out bigger than what you realized you're also going to find that some of those that are your direct soul connections like your deep soul family are not necessarily your good friends they were there playing a part, but they're part of your soul tribe. So your whole idea and interpretation of what a soul tribe is, is going to change in the days and months to come. However, you're going to begin to call my tribe of, what? what is it? Tribe of Ascension. No, that's not it. There, there's a word that that there are different words that you're going to come up with and soul tribe is a wonderful word to use but just be aware that there are people that are very important to you soul wise that may not be in league with you or in the same alignment with you in your everyday life so so you may decide that you have another word to say about that or you have another way of looking at it and um um so anyway that's that's important to know it's going to be easier and easier to find your soul tribe because you're just going to naturally be drawn to, to one another. You pay attention, especially now, as this is something that's so new to you, that when you feel drawn, well, let me go over here and go to this, you know, outdoor, outdoor gathering, or let me go and watch this movie. And it might not be that you meet anyone at the movie, but what you're doing is you are starting to listen to your intuition and your intuition will guide you to the places that are in your physical location that you're going to meet other people. And sometimes you just meet those people and you just know in your heart, oh, this person is one of my people because you just have that connection that instant connection that person that you can feel so completely at home with and um and so you may not feel that deep with every single one that's in your soul family or your soul tribe but um but be aware that much of this are going to be the people that you're choosing to have in your life as opposed to those that you might have been born into or those that you know that have been a part of your life helping you to grow through di through diversity or problems um, but what i'm picking up from this individual is people being able to find those that they're choosing to to be around they're choosing to live with because you love support and nurture one another and that will become easier and easier listen to your intuition and it will help it to become easier okay that if you'll go back those of you that are right here right now you'll see how long did she talk about that and then boom it all came together that was because the energy had been downloaded and it was complete so sometimes when, when they've talked about that we i just wanted to point it out so that then you'd understand oh that's what they mean all right any other questions for me should we pay our property taxes i have no idea yes no it's up to you. I don't know anything about that kind of stuff, so I have no idea. Uh, that's something that you would know because you're the one living there. And um, but I do know that all of all of your governmental agencies are going to transition. When they're going to transition and what happens between now and them, you know that that's up to you to decide. I have no idea. All right. Anything else? So, um, 
Let me regroup here for a second. I'm going to ask you guys to celebrate. Consider, what does a celebration look like to me? Does a celebration have to be something big and huge and gathering with other individuals? Or is a celebration finding joy in the now moment and therefore I celebrate the moment? But celebration, when you think about it, is most often connected with other people. You're celebrating something together. So celebrate that this ascension is complete. Celebrate that you're going to be meeting your soul tribe. Celebrate that you're going to use your intuition a lot more than you did before. Celebrate that I got home with less traffic than I did before. Celebrate that, oh, my flowers are coming up in the garden. Yay. So whatever it is, begin to think of what would it be if I had a celebration as a part of my day? because celebration is most often about joy, light, love, and community. Let that become a part of who you are and what's going on. Beloved, I am ever with you and coming more and more into this space. Aunt Saluia. Well, this is Shelly now back. What an interesting evening. Uh, that those guys i thought that was so fascinating how they talked about what in all these different movies you, that they come in and they put energy behind it that's transmitted to people um and it makes total sense how many times have you gone to see something especially in the past and you walked out of there thinking look that was what was up with that so i love to hear them say that you know they've got a whole huge team that is doing that to, to shift everyone out of the energy and help to awaken. So I think that's super cool. Well, it's wonderful to, to be here with you again. Please subscribe if you enjoyed this. Um, and then on all my different channels, you can see the, the different ones I've had, some long like this, some shorter, some meditations. Um, but thank you for being here. I truly appreciate it. And I'll see you again. Bye-bye. <laughs>